Hi friends, I'm here with a yoga offering. As always, please go at your own pace, rest whenever you need to, modify anything you need to. If something I'm offering doesn't work for you, you can always skip things or change things or do what feels right for you. Let's start on our backs today. So you can come into a Shavasana type position. Spread out. Try and be symmetrical on right and left sides. And you can either close your eyes or just take a soft gaze up towards the ceiling. And let the weight of your body release back into the floor. And these first few moments of your practice can be a time to let go of everything else. Whatever mental projects you're working on, things you're planning, problems you might be solving. <sighs> Just setting all of that aside so you can simply be here in your body, feeling your breath. And anytime you notice that your mind has wandered onto those things, something pops into your head, just as soon as you notice, see if you can invite yourself back to just feeling what you're doing, feeling your breath, feeling the sensations present in this shape, whatever shape you're in. So you're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open them as it's useful for you. And let's begin by sliding arms overhead, stretching out long through your arms and legs. You can reach through your fingers and your toes like a big full body yawn. And then interlace your fingers and press out through your palms and flex your feet reaching through the heels of your hands, the heels of your feet. And then release. Bring your right knee in, grab hold of it. Drop your chin so the back of the neck is still long, drop the shoulders. And then bring your hands to the back of your leg. We're gonna flex the heel up towards the ceiling and then point the toes as you bend your knee back in. Flex and straighten, point, and bend, flex and straighten, point and bend, and then flex and straighten and hold your leg up there, circle your ankle a couple times, a few big circles both directions. And then bend your knee. Open your knee out to the right and then straighten part way or all the way out to the side. And we're gonna bend as you point your toes and then flex and straighten, going back and forth a few times. Point and bend, flex and straighten, point and bend, and then flex and straighten and hold it out there. What are you noticing in this shape? What are you feeling here? Is there anything to let go of here? And then release, bend your knee, bring it across for a spinal twist. You can open out through your arm, letting your knee and shoulder release away from one another. roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in and take a little circle or rock with your knees, massaging the lower back and sacrum into the floor. And then grab hold of just the left knee and we'll drop the right leg long. Squeeze this knee in close. And then take hold behind your leg. Flex and straighten, point and bend. Flex and straighten point 
and bend, flex and straighten, point and bend, and then flex and straighten, hold it up there, circle your ankle, a few big circles, both directions. <sighs> And then release, bend your knee in, open it out to the left, and then flex and straighten out to the side. Point as you bend back in. Flex and straighten, point and bend. Flex and straighten, point and bend. And then flex and straighten and hold your leg out there. Feeling what's right here, letting go of everything else. And then release, bend your knee, bring it all the way across. Spinal twist. And roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in. A little circle or rock. And we'll roll our way up to sitting. And let's come onto hands and knees, tabletop. If you'd like to pad your knees, you might grab a blanket or cushion. Have your hands on something firm, like a yoga mat. Spread your fingers, hands right under shoulders, knees under hips, and start from neutral spine. So maybe drawing the belly in to make sure you're not overarching the lower back. We'll take a few rolls through the spine, starting by lifting the head and tail arching. Exhale, round. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curve. Now, inhale, arch, and send your right leg up and back. Exhale, knee to chest. Inhale, extend. From here, shift your weight forward. Bend your elbows straight back and dip partway or all the way to the floor. Press up from there. Knee in. Extend. Go forward to dip down. If going all the way is too much, just go where you can. Press up. Knee in. Extend. One more time. Go forward to dip down. Press up. Knee in. Extend. And then roll your hip open, reaching toes to the side wall. You can stay on two hands or take your left hand back. So opposite hand catches the foot, kick your foot into your hand. Try lifting up away from what's on the floor. So you're not collapsing into those joints, but really lift it. And then gently release, arm forward, leg back, square off shoulders, hips, draw the belly in. Imagine you could take your whole spine a little higher away from the floor. And then release, hands and knees, sink back to child's pose. Maybe give that right wrist a little rub or circle. Let's come back up to table. Set the hands under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale, lift the head and tail. Exhale, round. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curve. Now inhale, arch, and send the left leg back. Exhale, knee to chest. Inhale, extend. Exhale, shift your weight forward, dip down. Press up, knee in. Extend, dip down, going to the degree that works for you. Press up. Knee in. Extend. One more time. Dip down. Press up. Knee in. Extend. 
and then roll the hip open, reaching toes to the side wall. You can stay on two hands, or this time take your right hand back. Kick your foot into your hand, lifting up away from what's on the floor. And then gently release, arm forward, leg back, square off shoulders, hips, draw the belly in. Long spine lifting. And then release, hands and knees. Sink back to child's pose, maybe give that left wrist a little rub or circle. With arms out in front of you, Walk your hands over to the left, and then pull back through your right hip, stretching right side a little more. Let's come through center, and over to the other side. Pull back through your left hip, stretching left side a bit more. And then back to center. Lift up through table and come back to downward facing dog. Take your time getting into this first down dog of class. You might pedal out your feet a little bit, bending one knee as you press the opposite heel towards the floor. Shifting the hip side to side. Feeling what you're doing. Let's walk hands and feet towards one another and hang in ragdoll. Feet hip width apart, parallel. You can bend your knees a little or a lot. You can take any arm position, any movement, maybe a little sway or shake out here. Bend your knees a little more and slowly roll up, coming all the way up to standing. Let's step up to the front of the mat. Bring hands together. Feet can be together or apart. Come into your mountain pose, Tadasana. We'll take a full A-series sun salutation. Next inhale, arms sweep high. Exhale, fold forward, swan dive down. Inhale, lengthen part way up. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Come into your back bend. And that could be low or high, cobra or up dog. Maybe an extra couple breaths in this first one. And then back to down dog when you're ready. And here we'll take five deep breaths. If instead of down dog, you'd rather come back to child's pose or sitting or some other neutral shape, please do so. Each time we come to our rest, choose a shape that allows you to come back to ease. Last breath here. Let's come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward. Inhaling flat back. Exhale fold. Inhale up to standing. Exhale arms press down. Again inhale arms high. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Step or hop your feet back, lower down. Up dog or cobra and back to down dog. Right leg sweeps up. Let's bend the knee in. 
and start circling this bent right knee, making the biggest circle possible for your hip joint. You can let your hips open and close in response to the circle, lubricating the joints. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight, send it a little higher, and then take a big step forward. High lunge. And we're going to hold here with hands on the floor. If it's difficult to reach the floor and you have blocks or soup cans or books, you might use those. As you inhale, lengthen the back leg a little straighter. As you exhale, sink the hips a little lower. So it's just a slight pulsing. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. Last breath like this. Now, inhale, straighten the front leg part way or all the way. As you exhale, slow, deep bend again. Inhale, go to your hamstring stretch. And if you need blocks, use them. Exhale, deep bend. Take your full breath to arrive. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend. Let's take one more like this. Lengthen. And bend. Inhale, step back. High push up. Exhale, lower down. Up dog or cobra. Back to down dog. Left leg sweeps up. Bend your knee in and start circling. Feeling what you're doing, keeping breath slow and steady. Next time your leg is up, reach it straight, send it a little higher, and then a big step forward, high lunge. Feel free to adjust your footing, maybe grab some blocks. Inhale, lengthen, just the back leg. Exhale, hips sink low. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink. One more breath like this. And let's straighten the front leg part way or all the way. Exhale, slow, deep bend. Inhale, going to your hamstring stretch. Exhale, bend. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bend. Last one, lengthen. And bend. Inhale, step back. Lower down. Up dog or cobra. And back to down dog or child's pose or sitting. Five deep breaths. Last breath here. Let's come back through down dog and step or hop your feet forward. Inhaling, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up to standing. Exhale, arms press down. Let's take a couple of balancing poses. So we'll start by just feeling balance on two feet. Feet hip width apart, you can kind of shift side to side, front to back, tune into the soles of the feet, how you can shift your weight to bring it a little further forward or further back. And it's the same process on one foot, just with a little less practice, so it may not be as effective, efficient. <laughs> so let's move over to one leg. We'll take tree, vrikshasana. You can bring your right leg as low or high as you like, anywhere 
above or below your knee. You could go towards your inner thigh, but if that doesn't work, maybe the calf or ankle. Arms out to the side will be most stable. You could also bring hands together or arms up. So we've got the outer shape, which you get to choose based on your body, your needs. And then the real work begins, the inner dial, noticing what's happening inside this shape. Could you stand even taller? Are there things to engage that would help the pose more? Maybe a little abdominal engagement, a little more length through the spine. And then what is there to release here? Doing all the work of being in this shape, can you strip away unnecessary effort? Let's release that side, shake that out. Same thing, other side. So get steady on two feet. You can always pause, get steady on two feet again. Come to the outer shape that suits your challenge level. If balance is really hard for you, you could even keep the bottom foot on the floor. You could even use a chair or a wall. So choose an outer shape that's more or less at your challenge right now. And then the real work is how much can we open up and notice within this shape? So the complicated poses aren't so much can you make the shape, can you do the pose, but can you keep your wherewithal while you're attempting this? We each meet our challenges in different shapes and poses, so for some people this might be quite easy and the challenge is to keep from mind wandering. Can you stay curious? For others, this is a real challenge, it's not falling. In which case, can you feel your breath while you might be in a state of overwhelm? How do you come back to open, ease, presence? Let's release this side, shake that out. We'll do a quad stretch next. We'll bend the right leg, reach back for it. The left arm can be out to steady you at a chair or the wall or even at your foot. So choosing your challenge level and then how much can you notice? So the fine tuning never ends. It gets quite subtle after a while when the outer shape is in order, what we're doing may not even be perceptible from the outside, but can you still notice little ways to create more space, more ease? Let's release, shake that out. Feel two feet and then move over to one. Same thing other side. Drop the tail, lift the belly. Could you stand even taller? Can you direct the stretch right into the belly of the muscle, the front of the hip by dropping the tail even more? You watch as unnecessary tension creeps in and then let it go again. Let's release, shake that out. Get steady on two feet, feet hip width apart. We'll bring hands to the top of the buttocks. Roll your shoulders back, your elbows back. And then lift the chest, take the chest as high as you can, sternum rising up. your heart even higher and then release let's fold forward if you're able grab your big toes with the first two finger and thumb get a good grip lengthen and fold pull your head towards the floor imagine little spaces coming back between each of your vertebrae And 
and then release. Let's lower the hips. We'll come to sitting and we're going to get set up for a supported fish. So I like to do this over two blocks. You could do it over blocks, blankets, cushions, foam rollers, extra rolled up yoga mats, blankets, pretty much whatever you've got around. Try something under the upper back about the nipple line, so pretty high up. And then depending on how high the thing you've chosen is, you might want something else under your head. I like to use another block under my head here. And the higher and harder the thing you choose, the more intense it will be. The softer or smaller the thing you choose, the less intense it will be. Try and find an intensity level that feels appropriate for you right now. An eyelash in my eye, sorry. Legs can be bent or straight. Arms can be overhead or out to the side. <sighs> if you search through my backlog, I have a whole video on supported fish if you need a little bit more instruction. For now, finding a shape that you can relax into. If you are asking yourself, can I let go here? And the answer is, no way, this is really too much. Then take it down a notch so you could go lower on your block or switch out the block for a rolled up towel or something a little more gentle. Mm. And then seeing, can you let go? And this pose has a lot of the same benefits as other deep back bends that may require a lot more effort, like wheel or bow or camel. But in this one, the real work is just surrendering. The more you release, the deeper you'll go as you melt over your props. Mm. This is a pose we could hang out in for a while. Wonderful tool to have in your toolkit for when you feel like you've been sitting at a computer for too long or hunched forward. If you have tight shoulders, chest, upper back, this is so great. We'll uh, get ready to release for now. But remembering this one, if you only have a few minutes, supported fish is great. So to release, one gentle way of doing so is to interlace fingers behind the head. Point your elbows up towards the ceiling. Lift your chin to your chest. Use your arm strength to do so. Take the pressure off. And then you can lean to one elbow. Move your things out of your way. And roll back down with back flat. Just take a couple moments here. Feeling the effect of where you just were. <sighs> you might notice some increased sensation in the upper back, a little bit deeper breath. The next thing I'll suggest is a supported uh, bridge. So again, you could use blocks, blankets, cushions, bolster, foam roller, a couple books with a towel over it. <laughs> something under the sacrum. So a little bit lower than the lower back. You can play around with how high or low you want your props. And then when you find a height that works for you, let your hips release. And we can unwind in layers. Let and go as much as you're able here. And 
then every exhale is an opportunity to maybe let go a little bit more. You're welcome to just stay here in stillness, but I'll also suggest a hip flexor stretch that's wonderful. So if you bring your right knee to your chest and grab hold of it, could be with one hand or two hands, back behind the leg or up around the front, however you're able, hug your knee in as close as you can to your chest, and then straighten that other leg and let it hang towards the floor. So the idea with this is opening up the front of the left hip flexor. The more you hug your right knee in, the more you let that left leg hang, the more of an opening there can be there. And using imagery can be wonderful in a yoga practice, especially when you're not quite able to feel something. So sometimes hip flexors are so tight, they're numbed out. You don't even feel a stretcher. So imagine each time you exhale that the front of the hip is yawning open, lengthening, softening, whatever image works for you. You can probably feel the movement of your breath and your rib cage. You might imagine like an extra set of lungs in the hip, inhaling space, exhaling release. Let's switch sides, bring the left knee in, grab hold of it, hug it in as close as you can, and then straighten the right leg and let that straight right leg hang towards the floor. The more you hug the left knee in, the more you let that right leg hang, the deeper the opening can be on the front of the right hip. And hip flexors can be so tight, especially if you do a lot of sitting like many of us do. If you picture your body when you're sitting, your hip flexors are contracted. If you do that a lot, they get tighter to support what you're asking of them. And this opposite position may not come into your daily activity as much. So this becomes a good counter stretch for just life. <sighs> Having tight hip flexors can result in lower back pain because if the hip flexors are really tight and you're trying to do things upright, the lower back may um, have to take the brunt of it. So opening up hip flexors, strengthening core can both be really useful in relieving lower back pain. Last breath here. Let's come to some neutral shape. So that could be feet back on the floor, could be both knees bent and into the chest. Or you could straighten your legs either up in the air or along the floor. And if you would prefer to adjust the height or placement of your props, your blocks, feel free to do that. I like to do this on a slightly lower block. And we'll hold here, just unwinding as much as you can. And there's something great about a pose that's not 100% passive, like this one. If you completely let go, your legs would fall. <laughs> You'd fall off your block, but how much can you let go? You might find a place where it's almost as if the bones are stacked. Can you picture the muscles just hanging on the bone? Can you relax your hands, your shoulders, your face, your belly, your toes?
In a few moments, we'll release this. If there's any other leg variation you want to try before letting go completely, you're welcome. Eventually, bringing your feet to the floor so you can move your block out of your way. Let's take soles of the feet together and let the knees open up. And you can either just let your knees hang open out to the sides or support your legs. So a couple different ways to do that. You could slide blocks under your knees or a couple of cushions. Another great way of doing that is to take a yoga mat, roll it up, put it over your feet and then tuck it under your ankles and then the the blanket kind of supports the legs from falling open too wide <sighs> you can interlace fingers behind your head lift your chin to your chest imagine your head just resting into your hands stretching out the back of the neck a little more and then release the head down, a little more space to the back of the neck. Shrug your shoulders down away from you. And as long as this feels okay, we're gonna use this as a final resting pose. If this is not relaxed enough for you and you'd prefer to spread out into Shavasana, feel free to do that. <sighs> You might take a couple of extra deep exhales, maybe a sigh. Ah. Try and relax your mouth, relax your tongue, unclench your teeth, relax your jaw. Let go of any control of your breath. So your breath may be shallow or deep through the nose or mouth. No effort.
Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Gently waking your body up again. You can move your wrists. Eventually stretching out through your legs. Stretching arms overhead and a big yawn. When you're ready, bring your knees in. Roll to one side. And then use your hands to help you up to sitting. We'll bring hands together at the heart. Just taking a moment to thank yourself for your practice. Letting that gratitude expand out. for your life, for all your blessings. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for practicing with me today. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you're interested in doing a live class with me, I've started doing a weekly Zoom class on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time. And all that information is on my website and on Facebook. And you can email me if you need a reminder about the link and password. Um, But I'd love to see you there. Have a great day.